Good Monday morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. And I can hardly talk right now because this is Sunday afternoon, right after the worship service. And so my voice is about to go. So I'm going to try to make it through this because I've got to be somewhere tomorrow. And uh, just pay attention. When I say tomorrow, I mean Monday. So I'll be gone when you're watching this can get kind of confusing. But I hope you're having a great Monday, because I know I am. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in my life today, and I hope that uh, you are too. Uh, but listen, we've been talking in 1 Timothy chapter 3 about the biblical offices within the church. One is the elder, bishop, overseer, pastor. The other is deacon. And there are two offices that were are, are listed and described for us in the Bible. You remember the, the first deacons, I believe, were, were uh, called in Acts chapter 6 when there was a problem between the widows. The, the the Greek widows were not being taken care of as well as the Jewish widows were. And so there was some murmuring, some complaints, and it came to the apostles. And the apostles told them, look, we can't stop the praying and the teaching of the word in order to wait on tables. So choose seven men who are full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit and select them, and, and they will be the servants, the deacons, because that's what the word deacon means. It means servant, one who serves, one who runs alongside the master's chariot to take care of all of his needs. That's the idea of the deacon. And so when Paul comes to, to this in verse 8, he says, likewise, deacons must be reverent. Now let's, let's walk through this for just a minute. When he says likewise, he's referring to the the, the words he's just given us as the qualifications for the pastor. And so he's saying, just like the pastor, the deacon has to be reverent. That means that he holds in awe the majesty of God, that he is reverent when he comes before the Father. doesn't mean that he has to be sad or somber or, or mean-spirited in any way. Like Anyway, we won't go there. But it just means that they have to hold in awe God in the way that the pastors do. He says they can't be double-tongued. And that means lying. Can you imagine what it would be like if you had deacons that would, would tell lies, that would say one thing to one person and another to another? That's the picture here. They have to speak truth because if they don't speak truth, people won't trust them. They won't listen to them. They won't believe them. And so in this very important position, they have to be men of integrity and honest. He says they can't be given to much wine. Now, again, it doesn't mean that they can't drink wine or alcoholic beverages. Like I said uh, the other day, I, I would love for the Bible to say, thou shalt not drink alcoholic beverages, but that's my personal preference. The Word of God doesn't say that. It just says all things in moderation. So these deacons can't be given to drinking a lot of wine, nor can they be greedy for money. Why? Because they're going to be dealing with money. They're the ones who are taking in the offerings that will take care of the widows and orphans. So they have to be men of integrity, honest, that you can trust with the money of the church because it is God's money. Once we give it, it's God's money and must be used for his glory and honor. Verse 9 says they must hold the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Now keep in mind that in the New Testament, the word mystery means that a secret, something that's been hidden, but is now being revealed. So what is this mystery that they have to hold to? It's the mystery that Jesus, God's Son, the Messiah, came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross of Calvary to pay the penalty for our sins, and because of that, we can have everlasting life. Not only do they have to believe it, but he says they have to hold it with a pure conscience. That means that they have no doubts whatsoever. You know, there's some people who say, yeah, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but they don't really deep down believe it. Deacons must be sold out, committed, 100% certain, so that when they share the gospel, they're doing it with a pure conscience. But then look at what he says in verse 10. Let these also be first be tested, and let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Now let me finish with this today, because understand, this concept of blameless, just like with the pastor, is not perfect. It means that you can't point your finger at them and say, there's something wrong about this guy. This guy is living uh, a, a bad life. This guy says things that he shouldn't say. This guy does things that he doesn't say. Within the church, his reputation has to be perfect. Not that he is a perfect person, but his reputation is good and holy, that he's doing the right thing. Well, how do you know that? Well, it's because you have tested them first. Now, what does he mean? You have to see their lives over a period of time. It's not a matter of saying, okay, um, can you answer these questions the right way? 
No, it is testing them as watching them, observing their character, observing their lifestyle, making sure that their words match, match their actions and their lifestyle is one of holiness and reverence. Watch that in our deacons. You will see that these men are men who are gifted with the, the Holy Spirit and with wisdom as they serve you who are members of the church. We'll finish this up tomorrow. Be blessed and uh, pray for me today as I'll be doing a lot of traveling. Love you.